Almost ready, almost ready. Making sure everything's connected and well. Almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, sneaking on in. Welcome, YouTube. Welcome, Twitch. Gosh, you can hear the thunking around from upstairs. It's being captured on my mic. If you're wondering what's going on, it's it's all fine. Everything is fine. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host, your guide, and your servant, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. I am joined on the mic with Gary Geekbite, another community manager on the team. How are you doing, Gary? Hello. Awesome. Oh, it's beautiful. So, uh, yeah, we are, we have ourselves a little show, much like we do every single week. Thank you for all of those who keep coming back. We appreciate your viewership. Uh, we do want to spice things up a little bit more in the near future, and we do have some plans. Mm. So we'll see uh, how things continue to move um, as we move into, like, the console release next freaking week. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and, you know, that pacing, getting into uh, free content and... Uh, whatever else is in the future for us. It's, it's, what could it possibly be? I have no idea. I haven't built and told a single thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll just be good. It'll be fun. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a, a pretty good time. Today, we will be focusing on uh, attempting to play as much as possible with controller. Um, <clears throat> so everybody is aware, I am very much a mouse and keyboard player. But... I got to let you guys see what it's like playing with the controller, right? And I'm not toning the difficulty down. No, I'm just going to continue being on nightmare difficulty. So now it's truly going to be a nightmare for me uh, in the best way possible. And I'm happy to showcase this. So as I'm showing, you know, these details on controller, this is also to give any folks that are looking forward to the console um, a, a sense of how the navigation of the menus is done and, and all that fun stuff. Um, every now and then I will probably accidentally hit a particular cheat. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's just going to happen. Um, I'll do my best not to, if it shows up, just ignore it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I swear I've been practicing so it doesn't happen. Oh gosh. Anyway. So, uh, where were we at? We are in the gas field. We are, uh, flying a reaver, which is a sentinel, right? I'm not crazy. Yes, cool. It is, in fact, a sentinel. And that folks back on our home worlds would pay to see something like this. You're absolutely right, Adam. And we were, we just hit level 16. We got a couple of goods. Uh, we had the Zarkov signal decoder. Oh my gosh, look at all these valuable things. I'm excited. Um, but in regards to, like, teasing content today, there's definitely a chance. Um, we've been talking a lot about, like, additions that have been made to the itemization. And you're going to see more. It's, it's just going to happen. So when we do, we'll talk about it. We'll share that. So that's going to be kind of your fun little teaser stuff. But again, main highlight today is going to be using a controller um, and hopefully showcasing some degree of, of excellence <laughs> through that. Um, last but not least, uh, we're going to be answering questions the entire stream per usual. We want to make sure that you have any of your thoughts, ideas, suggestions, questions, concerns, whatever, um, to be embraced and loved by our team, no matter what degree or capacity, unless it's like way off topic and then we'll probably not discuss it. But of course we want to make sure that you are well fed with information and feeling good about uh, everything that's been going through development. So as we're picking ourselves up, uh, we are flying uh, with a, let's see, let's try to use, no, we want to use our pulse laser here. 
And I'm just going to be highlighting a little bit of the movement. A lot of standardized movement uh, using controller is very similar to uh, what you can do on the uh, mouse and keyboard. Now you'll notice that my viewport is actually completely locked to the middle. And this is how it, it works standard whenever you're playing via controller. You can change this. There are options to change this um, within your controls. Uh, there's lots of different things that you can do to adjust this. Um, for now, um, I have a couple settings that might annoy some people, but I kind of like it. We have automatic rolling that's on and I have my boost behavior set to hold. Um, some people say boost behavior should be set to toggle on controllers. And you know, for the most part, I actually do agree, but because I'm so used to Everspace One's controls being like that, and I played a lot of Everspace One via controller through playtesting, I kind of default to those sort of settings. So that's what I'm gonna continue to use. My auto aiming strength is down to 0.3. Now that's gotta get changed. Uh, we're gonna fix that, uh, otherwise we, we dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the way that you can actually change the uh, location of the, uh, is that a mouse? Oh, that's the crosshair behavior in the mouse and keyboard. Um, so gamepad doesn't have the ability to change how it floats. You can change it, the floating behavior only for mouse and keyboard. So this is not something that's akin to the, the uh, consoles. Um, it's very much centralized for your ease of access. Um, but we do have like all the access inversions galore, um, as well as again, we've got the automatic rolling boost behavior and the force feedback. Um, the controls will look very slightly, lightly different between the Xbox and the PlayStation uh, control schemes. Uh, namely, the biggest difference going to be the iconography, of course. So as you can see, I am using an Xbox controller today. Whew, so much information right out of gate. Uh, just giving you all the infos that I can possibly give. And now it's time to start doing some stuff. I can't remember if we explored underneath very much here, but it looks like we probably didn't, because I know there is some stuff to find. So a quick note on the auto rolling behavior. So in a lot of cases, it's a little inconvenient to try and roll in any sort of six degrees of freedom <clears throat> with a controller. A lot of times you more have like this movement where your ship kind of turns like this and then you turn like that. And we didn't have that particular style. Um, instead, we have a very precise control oriented sequence of events when you're moving your analog sticks. Uh, again, though, you can adjust this. There's different um, default input methods um, that you can see here, and they give everything on the screen. Um, as of right now, I do believe I'm using the default, which is the uh, the original Everspace C. It's get called Gamepad Scheme A, so you can see exactly what my capabilities are um, on this front. It's all there. And uh, yeah, lots of things. Lots of stuff to immediately know. It's a little overwhelming, probably. Especially if you were originally using mouse and keyboard and jumped over to a controller all of a sudden. So lots and lots of accessibility options there to, to get things to your liking. In fact, I see one more thing that I want to adjust because I have the center dot um, shown uh, and I want to hide that. Uh, I know it's, I'm, my body is blocking the view, but that just makes it to where that little square, the diamond in the middle, isn't being blocked, doesn't have a little dot in it. This is just ease of access, honestly. It's off by default. I turn it on for mouse and keyboard mode. But... Let's do an unknown signal just to kind of test our strength on the controller. Being a controller player myself, this stream should be fun. Oh, good, good, yes. I am, I am very hopeful that all of you who play more significantly with mouse and keyboard, or excuse me, with controllers, that you will absolutely embrace the banter in chat today. Because I'm not, I, I definitely have not uh, played a tremendous amount with controller.
I mean, shoot, maybe I'll even take pointers. It's, <laughs> that might not be a bad idea. So first up, we have a freaking outlaw base that we have to take. This is uh, probably not smart. And we have two groups of enemies that we're taking on. Also probably not smart. But hey, sometimes that's just the way it be. Oh, we jumped past them. Great. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, that turned out about as poorly as it could possibly have done. Yeah, we're, we're, we are, there's not even escaping that missile. Just watch this slow motion death. Oh, goodness. Actually, wait, we have teleport. <laughs> that was fun. Oof. But uh, yeah, things are not looking so great. Still, still, yeah, definitely, definitely on the death. Definitely on the death here. Mm -hmm. There it is. There it is. So I'm glad that I went to just a random location first before getting into like the story stuff because that would probably be painful to watch. Um, <clears throat> so there's gonna be a little bit of uh, death this stream. Uh, I would be surprised if there wasn't just because of the controller and my, uh, my understanding of, of controllers uh, just in general. Again, I am very largely a mouse and keyboard player. Um, but the, the key reason why we're doing this again, it's to show you the visuals on screen so that you can see um, how it's going to be engaged with, like all the tools and uh, how the accessibility operates, um, like especially in the various menu options, um, just so that you can see very clearly the methods of connecting to what you need. Um, there was a, a conversation very, uh, it's earlier today actually in Discord, somebody was asking about a digital cursor um, and we do not utilize that system. There's a number of reasons why. Um, I think probably the biggest reason why is internally, we don't feel that that is actually a very useful feature. Um, there are games that can pull it off, but in general, they can seem a little bit sluggish and disorienting. And for us, it just makes a lot more sense to just be able to move over left and right from wherever you're pointing at. And of course, you also have the ability to cycle between different tabs um, and still, for the most part, get pretty uh, pretty where you need to go pretty fast um, through this method. There's also nothing jarring or, or weird or even waiting on in the sense of a digital cursor um, that we just, we didn't want to do. We didn't want to go down that rabbit hole path and are pleasantly surprised by how this all operates. So, cool. All right. So we just cleared out that little bit of items for us. It's time to go into this base. However, I'm gonna try and, I think there were enemies over here. Yeah, there are. We're gonna try and tackle these enemies first. I'm seeing a user in the chat saying that they use Hotas. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I have not used HOTAS myself, but it does seem like the HOTAS community is pleasantly surprised by what we were able to pull off here. Ah, oh, I thought for sure that was going to get him his dang armor. There we go. Wow, this is, this is looking much better. Much less death so far. It's amazing what happens when instead of flying in between two groups of enemies, that uh, you take one group out first before you take on the second one. Like a night and day difference. Ooh, another ship color. Viridium! Also, as some of you can probably already see in the chat, there will absolutely be questions that are answered by Gary or even Michael at times, um, possibly Lee, other, other, other rockfish folks that are floating about just to serve you. Because we want to make sure that 
All things considered, the stream is going to be moving along, and on my focus, it doesn't get lost too much. But otherwise, goodness gravy. I really want to... Oh, that's a teleport drone. That's why. All right, we're going to just try and get as much distance as possible. You broke my pulse laser! You punk! Ah! Oh, that's actual pain. Hang on a second. What can we do about this? Do we have another weapon? Let's try and let's try and craft something just for the moment. Ah, uh, jeez, that is that is actual pain. It's not ideal, but you know we'll take it. Last shot before running out of energy deals 500% more damage. Can only occur once every five seconds. We do need it to come back, however. Oh my gosh, this puck! Ah! These teleport drones do not mess around! We are so low on energy, this is, this is uh... Oh, and that really? Okay. All right. Now I'm pissed. Now they're going down. All right, I'm gonna play with two hands. Okay. They blindfold okay. off this time. That's right. Look at that. An enemy base here. Whoo! Ooh, I do see a, 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 a pretty good question uh, in chat. I love those longer ones. It's great. Being as specific as possible is awesome. You do not need to apologize. We will be answering questions um, segmented through the stream. So I'm going to give this one more go. If I die again, we're going to move. We're going to move on. I really think that I can do this, though. I believe. You know, actually, maybe I need to, maybe I need to, to focus in on a different preset. Because these controls, uh, if, if I know it's, it's hard to see, um, the, the trigger button and the bumper, this is your hover up and down, and then your thrust axis is here, a lot, and boosting is pushing this in. And I have it to where it's hold, it's how I like it. For most people, you don't want that. You'll want it to be a toggle. I'm just saying that right now. Um, what I might do, what, is, what I might do is change this to where this is my thrust forward and backwards. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what happens here. Uh, no, I want to save changes, uh, apply, thank you, yes. We're gonna see how this operates instead. Okay, yes. Yeah, so this is my this is my forward, and now when I'm using the left analog stick, it's my rotation. It's my movement on that front. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna like this a little bit better. I guess we'll find out real quick. I am already feeling a bit more agile. Maybe even looks like I am too. This does feel a bit smoother for me. And of course, you know, that's going to be different for everyone. That's why we have different control schemes. Ha! But yeah, I'm already, I'm already feeling quite a bit better about this. And the controls I'm using are actually, um, they were the default controls for Everspace 1. So if you guys are coming over from Everspace 1, what you'll end up doing uh, is exactly what I just did. And again, um, it's going to be your customized controls over here in the select preset. And you'll be able to change it here. So it says right there, it says original Everspace A. So just the default in, in the original Everspace, it was Everspace A. Um, but here it's changed to the gamepad scheme B right-handed. Ironic because I'm left-handed, but don't worry about that. 
Don't worry about that. Alright. I really want to isolate this raider somehow. Um... Oh yeah. Good music to get me in the, in the mood. I like it. I like it. That's what I like to hear. Oh, no! Oh! Alright, alright. We're gonna need to get this outlaw raider down first anyway. Like, we're just gonna have to. Ah, we're not close enough! Ah, no! Alright, I think we're gonna... We're gonna have to brave Sir Robin this. Hey, GMB! Help! Help! Guess no, maybe? Ah, there we are! Yes! Yes, attacking GMB and GMB is, uh, not, not assisting whatsoever. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh... I guess that now is a good time as ever to mention that we are playing a dev branch where stuff can and will be wonky. Oh, please, yes. Oh, okay. I also see that our weapon just got worked again. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be real dangerous. Woo! Yeah, I think we're gonna have to just turn tail on this one. Just a little bit too much. I say as I just completely dive back in. <laughs> Good to see you, Alec. Now, if only he would attack the base for me, that would be even better. There we go. Okay. Bye, Alec. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very confident about taking out this base, but... I feel good about the progress made thus far. Also, quick note, um, just, just a really quick note, because I know that we have talked about like quick saves in the past. Um, you can't do that whenever you're in environments like this. Whenever you're going to like unknown signals, you can't take out a couple enemies like I did and then quick save right now. You, you can't do that. We consider that kind of cheesing. This is an all for nothing sort of space. So uh, yeah. So that's why I can't save and why I'm also very scared. So I want to keep this stuff. It's just going to rely on my skills and abilities, which is terrifying. Right. Gonna take our time. That's right. For all those just entering the stream, welcome to the overly cautious controller usage official Rockfish Games viewport into Everspace 2. <laughs> Woo! Not really sure where those missiles are coming from. Oh, okay. All right. I see. Woo! Oh! Explosions are cool! That was it? Oh gosh! Oh! Oh! That, that, excuse me! Excuse me! Let's get some distance. Alright! Progress! 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 Outlaw Bomber! Oh no! He wants range! What have I done? I've given him the advantage. Gonna keep 
this tactic going because it's working for us. Backwards circle strafing. Oh, come on. I need more energy. For once, I wish I actually had an energy injector. Oh, there's another. Oh, no. Woo! All right, he's distracted. That makes me feel real good. Yes! First try. No big deal. Awesome. Very, very good. So yeah, of course we have made sure that there are different control schemes to uh, to kind of be allocated to your liking. Because I mean, there's a lot of different games out there and a lot of different reasons why they have different control schemes. And you can be used to some, even if it might not technically be the proper fit for a new game that you're playing. And that's fine. That's why we, oh gosh, that's why we incorporate that so that you can customize the controls to your liking. Um, and those different control schemes are absolutely available on the consoles once they get here next week. Oh, next week. Giving you just that greater sense of control. I look over at chat, Alec did most of the work. Oh, <laughs> that's a hell of a burn. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love you all. <laughs> now these these guys are gonna be these are nothing. These are nothing. You know what? Come come over here. This, yeah. All right. Now we're playing with our food. That's that's a good sign that I'm getting comfortable with the controls, guys. All right. Okay. Now let's get out of here. Woo! Now let's get on out of here. So um, we're going into a segment where I want to just start answering questions now. So we, you've been able to see a little bit of nonsense of controller play and support. And we're going to get into probably some itemization. But I really don't want to hype this stream up for the sake of our console players. So if you can direct your questions more for that side of the, um, the space for now, that would be really appreciated. But... Uh, that being said, Gary, what do we got? What types of questions right. are coming in? Uh, we've got one that kind of touches on both PC and console uh, okay. from I am the law 42 over on Twitch. Uh, and they want to know, are there any notable differences between the PC and console version? There shouldn't be hardly any, if at all any. Um, the biggest change is gonna be kind of like the menu navigation as a whole, um, particularly like on some of these screens. Because like, for example, you're not gonna have a mouse and keyboard option here on the consoles, you know, um, but everything is gonna be almost one-to-one -one, uh, perfect parity. I say almost <clears throat> because there are a couple of, I guess I'll call them ongoing sort of issues that we're still kind of running down. Um, hopefully we'll be uh, taken care of in the, in the uh, console release and a couple more that we're still kind of tracking down um, just overall from a standpoint of um, the uh, PC side with the uh, Game Pass version. They're not, the PC uh, Steam version and the Game Pass version are not technically one-to-one -one parity. There is a slight difference between the two, uh, but we're looking for solutions to help with DLSS issues, um, with the, um, Oh shoot, what are, the, what are the other things? It has stuff to do with the WinGDK. Um, and hopefully we'll have solutions for that, um, you know, decently soon. Oh, DLSS. Uh, D DLSS. Track there's, IR. Yeah, the track IR, there it is. Thank you. There was something else, FSR one and two, I think. Yeah. So, okay. We are gonna set this waypoint because that's where I want to go. Uh, but let's go ahead and hit another question. That was a good question. Um, Pesky Husky over on YouTube. Uh, what's know, do you guys plan to continue building on the game after DLC or whatever? Uh, they hope they, that we do, because uh, they love the game to the extreme. 
Yeah, I mean, I hope that we do too. Um, that's a really hard question to answer. We, of course, we have plans for free content and we of course have plans for the premium DLC. Once we get there, then we can ha start having another conversation about what the future after that could possibly look like. It might be more work in Everspace too. It might be transitioning to a new project. I don't know. Again, it's really hard to say right here, right now. <clears throat> so we'll have to wait on that one together. Uh, and you know, I'll share more news on that when we can, if we can. Um, so, yeah. Next question, please. Right. We have uh, the very big question from Exomaths, which you did say. Um, yes. how, how does the gunship's alt turret prioritize targets? Does it always target closest enemy if the player is not targeting any enemy? And when fighting bosses, they feel that the turrets sometimes keep shooting targets even though that they have the boss targeted and the boss is within the turret's range. Uh, they said they can understand if the prioritizes mines if the ship has that passive, but most of the time they find that the turret chooses targets randomly. Okay, um, that is a very technical question that I love, but I am going to need to get further feedback from uh, whoever designed the turret AI. I don't know if that's going to be Marco or Hans Christian or maybe even somebody else on the team, um, but I will follow up with you on that one. Um, I believe you also had a pretty technical question in a recent stream as well and I asked you to go to the discord and ask the question there and then I was able to follow up um, if that was you uh, do the same if it wasn't you still do that because um, I want to make sure that we're answering these questions um, and again I do think that's great for what I understand I do think that it just targets whatever is closest and it goes with that it doesn't have anything to do with whatever the player has targeted so if you were hopeful on some sort of adjustment on that front um, I don't believe that's how it works but again I do want to be able to answer your question a uh, hundred percent accurate so um, i would love to follow up with you if you give me that opportunity again just post that question on the discord and i will do so uh, next question please uh golden holland over on youtube uh is wondering about will there be any new additions to locations like new secure containers in the future for the standing locations like you know all of all of the ones that you're accustomed to we really don't want to we don't want to like go back into those and and like change things around, right? And even adding stuff to locations is in a way changing. So we don't really want to, we don't really want to. I think at best, what you would see are more side missions maybe pop up in the future, possibly, but even that is something that's a bit on the table. So in general, if we're gonna add new content, it's going to be from new locations right as opposed to going back to previous locations and like changing things around and adding new secrets and stuff uh that that tends to make things a little bit more uh fickle and perhaps annoying uh in in some ways so we're uh, just being kind of gentle on our approach to that just being gentle on our approach to that so good question right yeah. three more lined up Sweet. um I am the Laura of 42 over on Twitch again. Uh, have we ever considered remaking Everspace 1 with our current Everspace 2 technology? Oh, that's kind of fun. Um, I mean, that's not a conversation that's really been drawn up so much, but um, I'm, I am incredibly confident that in the future, you know, once once Rockfish is, is making the zillions of dollars and we're like the standing AAA studio and all that type of stuff, uh, yeah, we'll probably do like a super mastery of Everspace 1 through 1,000 uh, package deal, $10. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, for now, I think it's going to be a while if we were to do that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I do think it sounds awesome to have like Everspace 2 controls implemented in Everspace 1. But the reality of it is that we need to work on the project we're working on. And if we're going to work on any other projects, um, there's some really hard questions to ask regarding that. Everspace One is truly not that old, um, and I don't think that it would get a lot of life breathed into it simply by uh, making some of those subtle adjustments. So. Excellent. Right. Um, unknown over on YouTube. Uh, also, no. Will the content update that's coming out later release on consoles and PC at the same time? That's certainly the plan. We have every intention to keep the parody 
between all consoles and platforms to be uh, as close as possible, um, if not perfect across, again, like that's the, that's the desire, that's the goal. Um, so even in the case of like Game Pass, like we've had internal conversations about how we can mitigate some of the, the delays uh, between like the Steam branch and the Game, you know, the Game Pass version, right? So like there are discussions there, like we want that to be as cohesive as possible. Um, and that that is what we will attempt to do. Um, so all of the, the console versions, um, you know, we talk about the free content update. Yes, that applies to the console versions. That's not like a PC exclusive ordeal. Um, the premium DLC out in the future, yes, that's also gonna be possible on the consoles. Like it's not exclusive to PC, um, all of that stuff. Anything that we're doing to Everspace 2, the game, it will be accessible to all of the platforms and consoles that we are pointing towards. Excellent. Uh, and finally, uh, Slurring Tetson over on YouTube. Are there any console specific issues that will or have influenced the PC version? That's a very curious question. Um, the answer is yes. I don't really know how much detail I should uh, crack into here, but um, the short of it is that development as a whole, anytime that you are doing anything on any, any place, <laughs> if you're gonna move to another place, there's going to be some sort of technical challenge in order to do that. Um, and it might not be the way that you think it looks. We'll keep it, we'll keep it nice and simple. So um, yeah, <laughs> nice and simple answer there. <laughs> what else do we have? Uh, that's it for the time being. Oh, okay, all right, very good, very good. That's a cheeky question, I love it. But uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna keep that one simple for now. I think we are going to change this one uh, just because I do like that firepower. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. So as you can see, like I'm, I really want to highlight this moment though. Uh, you know, again, I am playing on controller. It's an Xbox controller, but it be controls are dang near identical uh, from PlayStation controller. Um, and how you're navigating these menus, all of the sort of directions you can know are all listed underneath the item. So if you're ever kind of wondering what in the world uh, are your possibilities, um, it's all there. It's all there. So this one gives precision and tagging mines versus our increased EMP duration. Oh, I do like that MP increased EMP duration. But the precision could also go a long way. I think we're going to use this one as well. Um, and anytime you're doing any sort of replacing of items, um, it's always going to take the item that you have selected and it's going to put it into the respective slot. So um, also with like weapons, for example, if you wanted to change the, oh, whoops, if you wanted to change the uh, weapon that you're um, adjusting to, um, you have to hit the, um, yeah, okay. It's the left trigger, for example. And whichever one you are uh, comparing it to, it will change that slot. So I'm doing two things here. The first thing is that I'm comparing the item, which is why it's out to the right. But even if you're not comparing the item, if you look in the upper right slot, you can actually see which item it's compared to just from its little iconography. So this flak is being compared to our scatter gun, and now it's being compared to the pulse laser. So you can see that little icon getting changed. Any of you ever, ever missed that? That's what that's identifying. And furthermore, those little bitty pips that it's cycling between left and right, if you look just above the kinetic DPS and just below the title of, of flak, those two little pips are indicating your two weapon slots. So you also know uh, what it's doing there. Foundational little tweaks and, and doohickeys that we put into our UI because we want to make sure that you are well informed and know what's going on. So take advantage of that. Take full advantage of that. I mean, that's not console exclusive that you do all of that stuff on PC as well, so. Uh, let's see. I think we're gonna take this as well, yeah. Yeah, it's just a stronger shield and we don't have to be boosting to get it to recharge. I, I think that's probably our best call. So, all right, let's go ahead and launch back out now that we are uh, not looking like pain incarnate. And let's head on to our next site. Looking over at a YouTube chat and I'm seeing nice detail. Excellent, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we've got some pretty strong designers on our team 
Um, we've had solid correspondence and consultation of design and how it's all coming together. Uh, UI, UX direction, um, we feel is pretty, pretty on point. You know, we're, we're pretty happy with how it's all being conveyed. Also, I just want to let you all know that if you are watching this and you see the mouse cursor in the very upper left, look, okay, that's a, that's a dev build thing. Of course, that will not be present when you are playing on console. There will not be a mouse just casually hanging out there. <clears throat> All right, let's see what's going on here and uh, what we can do about it. I don't know if I'm ready for redeemers, Gary. Ah. Well, you're just gonna have to redeem yourself. Stop that. <laughs> like a week off, you know. <laughs> like other men. <laughs> so this, I believe, triggers the first uh, first attacker. We're just gonna. Okay, there they come. It's kind of a funny uh, way that I'm doing this because generally you want to listen to all the stuff that Hive has to offer before you start triggering enemies to come at you. But, you know, for some reason I'm feeling frisky, apparently. Alright. Goodness gravy. I am not happy with the lack of damage output from that. That'll do it. Have I mentioned I like the music? Good job, Gero. All right, let's see if we can find some more things to blast. Good, good. Probably we'll see some more enemies soon-ish. Follow the cables, pro tip. This applies to a lot of different sites, by the way, where if you see like a shield and there's cables nearby, follow the cables. They're most always going to lead you to what you need to do next. It does come down to using player perception to puzzle solve. We don't want the game to just give the details to you. We require the games to use their senses. But more redeemers spawned. I mean, I'm not complaining at the moment. But still. This one's a similar design. Got the cables going along the edge. Yay! Ah, here they come. Here it is. Ah, oh, I, oops. Up against the wall, I have done this myself. All right, let's just get some space. Wow, where did our health go? I know we, oh, really? It's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. <laughs> Pick that shit made of aluminium again. Oh my gosh! Ah! They're drones. Oh, I knew their drones were gonna be a problem. They're at least disable. Gosh. Wait. I thought I had more. Oh. Okay. How do we do this? That's going through my ship. I'm sure that's perfectly fine. Um. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Do you want to focus on the Disciple first? Oh gosh, maybe that was a bad choice. Maybe that was a bad choice. I'm not sure. 
But now's a good time to talk about um, how we did update the checkpoint system a little bit more. Um, so that way you don't have to start at the very, very, very beginning of locations that you've warped into. Um, we've made things a little bit smarter. Of course, of course it didn't trigger for some reason. That one's definitely a bug. That one will be addressed. Oh gosh, dev builds are fun. <clears throat> okay. So generally speaking, whenever you've done a bunch of stuff in an area, we have legitimately, we have updated this to where now, uh, say like you collect a, a new item, for example, uh, specifically from like um, uh, valuable shipwrecks. We wanted to make sure that if you died, you didn't lose that stuff. Like we want you to keep the stuff that you find. Like say if that had like a legendary in it, that would be absolute awfulness if you lost it. And we recognize that. We've seen that happen to a couple people and it sucks. So we are fixing that by having these auto save points um, adjusted uh, through the experience to compensate for it. Now, generally speaking, okay, I see a game saved there. Maybe I actually need to load the location save, the auto save. I'm not gonna risk it. We're just gonna keep going. But um, but yeah, you'll see that we have like location saves versus the auto saves, which are identifying the difference between um, if you're still in an area and you're accomplishing tasks and it's saving to preserve what you've discovered and what you've collected versus the auto save, which is generally speaking, um, an auto saves whenever you are exiting, or excuse me, when you're entering a location or you are stopping at a base. So those are the primary spots whenever you're going to see an autosave versus location saves, which are going to be dotted um, throughout your adventure, primarily whenever you are obtaining specific goods from specific sites so you don't lose them. Okay, we saved our alt this time, so now it should be a little better. We'll see. Why would your father have gone there in the first place? He was lured there with the promise of being able to study a warden up close. Other scientists went before. Actually, hang on. We're gonna we're gonna go over here first. While I think about this, try to clear the gate for safe passage first. Oh, it it resets. Sorry. Ski up. Missed. Okay, I want to save the ult a little bit because that other guy got away anyways. Bring him down. Awesome. Stop. Okay. Cool. So much easier when you set up a plan. Goodness. I guess I could activate my cruise drive. <laughs> Just want to clean up this area's resources. You know, you know the drill. You're all gamers, you get it. I'm surprised I don't need Culver for anything. Or, you know, actually, I think I, think I untagged um, some of the, uh, the perks that I was looking for because I didn't want to get them. <laughs> Energy orb. Oh, wow, we still need a lot on that front. Flawless Culver Crystal. So we are we are shooting at the right stuff. We need more Flawless Culver Crystal. So that's um, definitely something we wanna watch out for. I could probably find a little bit more in this area, but we'll keep going. 
we will keep on going. Into the Kait Nebula, where we are questionably prepared. Think I'll level up today? Ah, that's a hard question, because we leveled up last time. So, uh, maybe? I do like this cutscene. We'll, we'll watch the cutscene. It's pleasant. But yeah, generally speaking, um, I don't know. It takes a while to level up. But if we can complete a side mission or two, very interesting. maybe. Is maybe a, <laughs> a couple of added jobs. And uh, of course, all of this also implies that I don't die very frequently. So that's uh, definitely need to be considering that. Chuckle from Gary. Looking at the drawing, isn't here. Did you have something to say? Is that uh no, no, no. It's, 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 <laughs> oh gosh. Alright. Let's try and get some of these goods a little bit more uh, tactfully. Uh this site. So this is I think this is one of the first places. No, it's not. Never mind. Uh, there's a there's a number of places that you can find before this that uh, show you the radioactive sites. And a lot of what that's going to do... Ooh, this is good. This is good for us. A lot of what the radioactive sites do is they reduce your um, overarching pull points over time. Um, so the more radioactive your ship is, the less strong it ends up being. So you don't you don't want that. You don't want that. It's bad. I'm not seeing any flawless Culver Crystal drop. Come on. Come on. Not a one? Oh, the pain. The pain. There's an item over there, too. Ooh, it's a valuable. But how do we get there? Probably from the bottom or the top. Right? And a protector sphere. Good, good. I'm guessing we'll need to follow the cables for that one, maybe. Let's just see if we can find the socket really quick. Just using some standard... Yeah, alright, we just follow the cables and it gets over there. Okay. Cables, man. <clears throat> you see cable? I feel like you see cables in video games. It's just like a clear sign of follow these. It means something. You know what I mean? Gosh, the number the number of games that have cables intentionally placed. We're so cliche here at Rockfish. <laughs> oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, gosh. I guess I need to go into it, don't I? Yep. Ah, there we go. Out, 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 there we go. Cool. Neat. I feel like we're, I'm gonna keep pushing that button wrong every time. I feel like we're collecting some pretty good stuff. Ooh, oh, oh! I do think I enjoy this. I do think I enjoy this. Critical hits, 4% chance to recharge weapon damage by 2% after 10 non-critical sessions. All right. I don't like how it does the damage against armor, but you know what, I think this is a solid, a solid upgrade. I do like the Enforcer, but maybe I need to have something that can chunk some shields down too. Mm. Mm. Tricky, tricky. I think we're gonna wait on it. But you can see that we're getting some pretty high level stuff drop. That's because the enemies that we're facing in this area, the this area's um, level is uh, a bit uh, higher than normal. So you're gonna you're gonna see that 
uh, a bit more in the like enemy drops items that are spawning um because it's a, a greater challenge we're gonna get greater loot um and should we get something that's really really good we'll be able to modify it stick us stick it on our ship um it's a nice benefit honestly if you are playing the game and you want to like truly challenge yourself and you go someplace that's generally purple on the map um it's going to give you better stuff that you can if utilizing the crafting system uh, use earlier than not. Let's let's just do this quickly. Get through, get through. All right, cool. You see that radioactive percentage up there? If that reaches 100%, then uh, bad stuff starts to happen. But because it didn't, it's going to drop off, and we're mostly fine. Mostly fine. Thankfully, there's no enemies that uh, stack radioactive damages uh, to you whenever uh, you're playing this game. That would be a nasty addition. Yeah. I had a feeling that we were gonna lose energy a bit faster than what we would like, but it's what it is. Oh gosh! Ah! Oh my goodness, I just... <laughs> oh no, I don't have... I don't have all the things that I need. Oh wait, I can craft the missing one. I'm a doofus. I'm a doofus. All right, so we are going to craft at least one set of these medium manners. Um, gosh. Ugh. Is there anything else that we can do? Ah! I believe that would work. Hmm. Probably want to change that here. So we are going to need to rely a little bit on some uh, navigational, whatever you want to call it, to get some space, have these come back up. We are definitely creating as much space as possible. Looks like they're no longer interested. So we're gonna start repairing up a little bit. And I mean, shoot, because we have it, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our cloak field generator, get in there, take them out, pick up whatever loot it is that they drop. I mean, these guys are two levels higher than us. This is, we are, we are playing with fire, and then on top of that, uh, you know, my mouse and keyboard player here is playing on controller. <laughs> it's not an excuse, I promise. All right, let's do this. So I really, I want this drone gone ASAP. Woo! How did that miss? Oh, oh gosh. He has buddies. That's a lot of buddies. I don't I don't like your friends. Please go away. No thank you. Look at how big this particular area is. Actually, in a lot of cases I forget how big most of the areas are. A lot to explore in this game. Totally ran into that wall. I call shenanigans. He should be dead. We gotta get those shots to hit, otherwise, he's just gonna regenerate shields. Now! I have an idea. Beautiful. Oh! Merry Christmas! 
Let's just, uh, <coughs> where'd that go? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep, no big deal. Float field generator. Thank you, my friend. I don't think we're going to mess with these other guys. In fact, man, th this is proving to be quite the challenge. So I'm going to put this as a poll to the general chat. I want you guys to let me know if you would rather have me push through Kite Nebula, where we are under leveled, or if you want to see me go back and explore some other locations and, uh, uh, you know, have the potential to get more items to drop and talk about, uh, you know, teasers potentially. So go ahead and let me know uh, what your thoughts are on that in the general chat. Because these streams are just as much yours as they are mine. Like this. Oh, come on! Those were dream redeemer drones, man. Oh, no! Dang it. Okay. Now oh, we gotta bail. We're bailing. We're bailing. Get front shield. Ooh. Oh, I should go get the front shield. That would probably help a lot. I didn't see a lot of votes from YouTube. In fact, I think I only see two so far. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and go back then. Let's go back. Yeah, I, I intentionally added the close call perk um, because, you know, nightmare difficulty is not messing around. And I figured that that would kind of alleviate some of the issues, uh, you know, just general gameplay has to offer. Please don't hit me. I just want to leave. I just want to leave. Leave me alone. All right. So yeah, we'll we'll go back for a little bit. It seems like most of you guys agree, so that's good. I think we're going to, we could probably explore a little bit. Hmm, let's see. Hmm. Actually, I know where I want to go. Let's get some new toys. Let's go ahead and answer some more questions. We're at a good spot in the stream. Uh, what do we got collected up? Right, we've just got a couple that have come in. Um, so, first off, from Exomass over on Twitch, um, he's just asking for a little bit of um, uh, a background, really. Uh, what was the motivation behind naming the game Everspace? Uh, is there any interesting story related to that name? Unfortunately, there's not really that much of an interesting story. There were a lot of different names that were actually proposed, and um, Everspace wasn't actually the first top, like the top pick between all team members at the time. And um, what ended up happening is that there was a dispute regarding, um, I want to say it was, oh, this is not the spot that I thought it was. Shoot. Um, but I do think I can land somewhere. Um, let me pause this really quick to answer this uh, question. So, um, but there was dispute pertaining to um, false association based off of like the naming convention what was the top pick at the time uh, where it was like, oh, actually, we probably shouldn't do this because of a, that, a specific reason. I can't remember what the specific reason was. I don't think it had anything to do with IPs. I think it was just like a general association uh, concern. So it was the second pick, which was Everspace, uh, since specifically for Everspace 1, um, it was encapsulating a space that was getting procedurally generated at random and you didn't really know what was going to happen next. So it felt like um, it was never ending and um, the ever space uh, conjunction there just kind of like implies this ongoing never ending experience through multiple runs and sequences. And since that was the sort of franchi franchise name, um, now moving into, you know, the rest of the franchise, we're going to continue calling it, you know, Everspace. Um, and so this one's aptly named Everspace 2 because it is, in fact, the second 
game in the series. <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's about it. That's uh, that's the exciting story of the the terminology behind. Oh, we got this. That's nice. Uh, the terminology behind uh, naming convention here. That's, um, I don't think I want to do this uh, side mission yet. This uh, this will probably hurt us. Um, I want to go get the fusion hook, which apparently I forgot where it's located. So let's try that again. That one's... That's the... That's the downed vessel, I think. Is it this one? I can't remember the locations over in Zarkov. But the music's awesome. What's another question we got? Uh, we haven't really got another question, but it's something that's cropped up uh, a couple oh, sure. of times already. Is regarding the console release time. Yeah. Um, on Tuesday, um, I've just told people that there's nothing been defined as yet, uh, but as soon as we do have a time for release, we shall let you all know. Yeah, absolutely. Just want to reiterate that one more time in case anybody kind of missed that. Um, with the release date of the consoles being on the 15th, we do not have a specific time in place at this time. When we do, we'll let you know. Gladly let me but yeah, that's a that's an important one to to nail down. Thanks for bringing that one up, Gary. Still not getting any of the better coal for crystal. What in the world? My luck has Death run build. out. <laughs> What'd you say? Dev build. Dev build. It's probably broken. That's my guess. Yeah. So a little bit of irony there, but also there's a bit of truth. Um, you know, guys, like for anybody who's ever wondering, like, why don't we? Uh, that's such a beautiful scene. I almost for for a very brief second, I thought I was playing Aerospace One. Like it just, it the, the association was beautiful in my mind. All right. Anyway, um, but for those who are are wondering about, um, shoot, what was the topic I was just talking on? Wow, my brain skipped around so hard. <laughs> What was I just talking about? Wow. Um, I can't even remember. I guess it wasn't that important. No big deal. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, the dev build. I was talking about the dev build. The reason why we don't make little changes and then uh, post them up onto the live branch over on Steam every week, for example, is because the sheer amount of chaos that would ensue from that. Woo. The sheer amount of chaos. Um, so, yeah. Just think about it from a perspective of like a, a game developer where you're trying to refine systems and better them and you know, all sorts of things. And so your focus is primarily locked in on that task. You submit a build a week later that you give to your entire player base um, do you think what's going to come next is praise and joy and thanksgiving, or is it going to be bug reports galore, uh, where everything that you thought was fixed is not actually fixed, and you now have twice as much work to do because you released that build uh, instead of waiting to launch it whenever it was actually stable? Um, and that's just not something we're going to throw ourselves into. We don't think that's a, a very healthy formula for our team and for our product. It might work for others, but it just doesn't work for us. And as such, that's why, generally speaking, at the start of these streams, I give that disclaimer. I say, yeah, this is a Dove Branch build. You might see some wonky stuff because it, it that's very much what happens. <laughs> With all the assortment of tools and tricks that we've been trying to implement, uh, stuff will break. There is no denying that. Cannot get around it. Oh, I thought... Oh, I read the markers wrong. Silly me. Silly me. One more. Chaos, call it fun. I mean, it's fun to a degree. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny, uh, like, bug hunting can actually be a lot of fun, but then it can also be the worst experience for a developer of all time. Um, it just kind of like depends on what's happening and. Oh God, if I hit, if I hit anything there, I think I probably would have died. 
Woo! Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that an area without enemies was going to be so dangerous. Woo! Um, but yeah, we just, uh, we don't, it's just not a formula that we use. <laughs> All right. So this is a, this is a, a tad bit spoilery. If you've never done this, uh, like, goodness, definitely should explore more areas for one. But two, this has, uh, what, I mean, we're almost there. I'm kind of spoiling it. Um, but we have the fusion hook uh, bound to this location. So if you want its powers, you have to go here and accomplish the puzzle. Uh, oh, for a brief second, I forgot how to uh, push buttons on the All right. Uh, what's this one? Is this one listed? I can't remember. This one is, though. Uh, all the way down here. Oh, yeah, they're all listed down here. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. We're far enough away? Nope. Okay. All right, that's fine. I think. I hope. Okay, so we have Z. And we have S. I mean, they're not really those letters, but, you know, symbolic. Probably shouldn't be flying around with a single health point, should I? <laughs> like, I will bump into loot and it will kill me. <laughs> Alright, Fusion Hug! Unlock! Woo! Nice. I do want to see if I can get any semblance of a higher tier from this Pulver Crystal, because if I can't, I am totally reporting it and claiming it's a bug. I don't think I'm getting drops, man. What's going on? I'm being denied. We may or may not have changed some stuff uh, about resources, so, you know. <laughs> Yes! Yes! I don't think that was uh, enough, though. Nope. <laughs> How much more do we need? We need seven more! Oh, gosh! <laughs> I need to find some new item attributes that would help me out on this one. <sighs> Goodness, gravy. All right. Any more Culver here? Is this all Insidium? After this, we're going to go to base and we're going to heal up. And we're going to explore some other areas. Some new territories. Unlock some things. Better our equipment, our ship. That's kind of what you're supposed to do. Oh! Oh, please! <laughs> I am playing with fire so badly. I kind of like it at the same time. <laughs> okay, that's not Culver, right? Good, okay. So let's just get out of here. <laughs> Whew! So we are a little bit slow on the questions, guys. So um, just a reminder, you know, we are really looking forward to the console release uh, next week. Next week, Tuesday? 15th out of Tuesday? I think it is. It is, yes. Tuesday, next week, consoles. That's going to be the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and X. Very much looking forward to it. I am playing with a controller today. It is hard for me, but we are very pleased with the results from our internal testing, uh, as well as... Uh, yeah, it's just internal testing. That's really what it comes down to. So, yeah, feels good. Let's try not to bump into something and explode. Almost there, almost there. Victory, all right. Go ahead and re 
these stalker stuff too. All right. So we do have, and we do have a few more things that we can craft, which is good. Um, I'm going to mark these all as seen. I'm going to be kind of, you know, a butt about it. But here, let's take just a quick moment. 10% increased secondary weapon damage while cloaked. That is... That's kind of... That's something. That's definitely something. Man, I'm starting to, like, just feel like if I could find that one on a number of, of pieces and equip that, that could be pretty hilariously good time. But for now... I think for now we're gonna just uh we're gonna keep moseying on. We do need to go to a storefront though. Excuse me. Nose itching. Could also complete stuff in this area. Let's let's do this. This is right here. Why not? Can we already tell how many gigabytes the PlayStation 5 version will be? That is a that is a cool question. I like that. Um, it is to my understanding that there is no reason why it would be any larger than the PC version. And uh, uh, give me one second. Hang on a second. Let me try to remember the size of the PC version. I should really have this memorized. Probably. 31 gig, I think. Yeah, it's it's around it's around 30 to 35 uh, gigabytes. I would be rather surprised if it was larger than that for either the PlayStation or the Xbox. In fact, I'm rather confident that it's going to be less simply due to there being um, some differences um, in the versioning. So <clears throat> I can't give a specific value, but again, I would be very surprised if it was larger than 30 gigs. Very surprised. I know it was an on-the-fly question, but it was a good question. So, yeah. It's not always going to happen. Don't get used to it, folks. <laughs> All right, let's get this power. I will say one thing that I truly love about the controller, and I'm being sincere here. I am a mouse and keyboard player, but there is something that's so beautiful about like the fluidity of motion of an analog stick. Like being able to do this movement, this is not possible with mouse and keyboard right here. Like what I'm doing, it is just, it is simply not possible. Like look at the precision I have of moving my ship in the direction that I want. It's, you, you can't do that. Like if I'm on mouse and keyboard, which I am now, this is mouse and keyboard, right? If I wanted to move my ship in a circle, it has to be like this speed, and I can't I can't slow down or make that go faster unless I'm like tapping buttons and like it's 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 just not the same. It's not the same, and that's because on the controller um, there's that sort of uh, I believe it's called haptic feedback, where depending on how much you're pushing or pulling or moving a button or um, analog stick in a particular direction, like it gives you that very strong sense of control. And this is something we're incredibly pleased about um, and looking forward to seeing how our uh, console player base responds to it, because we very much enjoy it. And again, like I'm a PC uh, mouse keyboard player, like through and through, and yet there is just something you cannot beat about this. Like you just can't, you can't, you can't beat it. Like this is the best right here. You only get it from a controller. So uh, yeah, top marks on, um, top, just top marks, just top marks on the controller. Really do like that. Now, sometimes these buttons tend to have, ah, there it is. They will have like little indicators that help you figure out what needs to be pushed first or what needs to be pushed in like a sequence or an order. Um, this one, it has that tiny little blip right there, right? That's not a button. It's just a little blip that helps you identify where it needs to start from. 
Um, and then I think this one's a simple one where you just go around. Oh, no, it's not. Is it one side than the other? We repeat the process, maybe? Pattern memorization skills, Simon says. How dare you? How dare you? But generally speaking, we do have um, like little indicators. I've gotta be missing something. In most cases, we have them. Of course, it's the last one I choose. So it's you! Reverse pattern, of course. Reverse pattern. Because it's on the opposite side. Okay, all right. I get it. It clicked. I has a brain. There's always a pattern to them. Uh, fun fact, we originally had some of the puzzles kind of like, actually we had I think it was more like a, a pretty decent amount of puzzles that were a bit more random. And we had a, a meeting at some point where we talked about like how they felt and it was like, we need to have a little bit more direction on how these are coming together so that players understood the assignment, right? Um, and even still, like even having revisited a number of these uh, sites um, through early access, this is, you know, before full release, um, we did make a number of changes based on community feedback on a, on a lot of those little situations, but even more so, uh, we just kind of continued down that almost rabbit hole, if you will. Um, and after 1.0, um, guys, I'm just going to tell you straight up that um, the way that we are looking at these puzzles, um, we understand that it can produce some frustration a little bit more than we had intended it to do. Um, we want you to think about how to solve them like that's absolutely an intentionality behind the way we've designed the levels like i've been talking about cables i talk about like uh, patterns all of that type of stuff it is there um but if you're having challenges with that and we see some people talking about the challenges with that um we are we may or may not be looking into some stuff of uh how we can alleviate that for you so um that's something that we'll talk about more in the future but i do want to just like make that known so all of you who come in to watch these streams or even you know otherwise if if anyone's ever kind of like complaining about the the puzzle solving if you will um you could link them to this very moment of the video and let you guys know that we hear you we understand and we're evaluating what that looks like too so just know that just know that let's see Ooh. I do like me some corrosion missiles. Hmm. Probably replace our mines. Our mines are boring. What in the world? Yeah, let's uh, let's equip that. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're gonna sell a lot of this stuff. So let's just sell that. We're going to equip that. Sell all of that. Sell that. Honestly, this thing could have been so useful earlier in the stream. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna take that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna sell some of this other stuff. It just doesn't have a lot of value, unfortunately, to us right now. Also gonna sell these because I want the monies to buy a new ship. I think that's what we're gonna do to top off the stream. In fact. Uh, to buy a new ship. Um, so I want you guys churning in your mind space what new ship you would like to see flown next. We have been flying the Sentinel for a while. It's what you guys ended up choosing. I'm pretty sure of that. If it wasn't, then I'm sorry. I had to veto it. Uh, but regardless, I do like being able to show stuff off for you guys. And it's no different with the ships. Hmm. I think I'm going to... I really want the blueprint progress. Okay, we're gonna sell the ones that the blueprints are done with. Yeah. This is the only one, I'll scrap it. I wanna make the blueprint progress, so, okay. Uh, still need more flawless, ugh.
know, since we're using that Synchro Pulse, I'm kind of wondering if maybe we should use Downtime Warrior instead. Uh, granted, Play It Safe could probably save our butt uh, a number of times, too. This is a tricky one, you know? Because requiring less energy means you can fire it longer, which means you can kill your enemy faster, which means you take less damage. But then this one says, hey, if you're using your devices, you can have chances to completely negate damage, but only for that very specific moment. Mm. Tricky, tricky. Tricky, tricky. Will definitely have to be something we uh, explore a little bit next time. But for now, let's go ahead and we're gonna head back over to Union. We're gonna head back over to Union. Uh, let's just... Here, let's go all the way over here. Um, and I think we're just, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go to Prescott. And for anybody who didn't actually know you could do this, if you ever ping a spot on your map and you're not in the system, uh, yeah, we, we, we hear you. Um, we actually have the spot that connects to wherever that's at uh, pinged instead. So as you can see on the map, even though this site isn't marked, because it's the site that gets you over to this one, it's marked. I say that one more time just to make sure everybody understands. This site is not marked. We marked Prescott all the way over there on the left side of the screen. But because that's where we're going, this site is marked with where we're at. So it helps us understand how to get there. So since we are flying back to Prescott now and we're gonna look at some ships, um, let's go ahead and answer just a few more questions. I'm seeing some decent questions showing up, so thank you, everybody who's paying attention, who's uh, commenting, who's question, dropping those questions. Uh, let's go ahead and crack through some of them. Oh, um, effortless C over on Twitch. Uh, they've noticed that for the PC version that there's left hand and right hand presets for controller. Uh, do you have any recommendations for which type of control setup to you? Oh, dude, that's so the, the, the it comes down to preference. It comes it comes down to um, experience. It comes it comes down to oh my gosh, there's the, it's so hard to say what's the be all end all. For me, the Everspace A layout, which is from the original Everspace, that's what suits my fancy the best. And what that means is that when I'm moving the analog stick, it rotates the ship. Okay, so the rotation of my ship is bound to the left analog stick and my going forward and backwards are my um, left trigger and left bumper respectively. That's what suits my needs, but the default setting is different. The default setting when you are going to spool up the game on consoles, the default setting will be this one right here. And what that doesn't set here, let me just show you. Let me just apply it. Uh, uh, Apply, yes, uh, back, back, resume. Uh, so here, instead, the uh, the thrusters, up, the toggle and the, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm getting attacked, I'm trying to explain things and now I'm in a different control scheme. It's basically, <clears throat> uh, instead, your left analog stick moves you left and right and when you push the analog stick upwards, that's your thrust forward. When you move the analog stick backwards, that's your thrust backwards. So everything on the analog stick is moving on a plane like this, as opposed to a plane like this, okay? So the control scheme that I like moves you on a plane like this when you hover the, when you use the analog stick. But what I changed it to in the default one is that you're moving on a plane like this. Hopefully that makes sense. And then the, the triggers, the trigger and the, the bumper, on the one that I prefer, when you're able to move like this from the analog stick, that's your forward and back. And on the default one, when you're moving like this, uh, this is your up and down. It is, this is so much easier just to like look at the documentation. I'll, I'll like post screenshots in the Discord afterwards. Okay, so that way, that way there's no confusion. <laughs> like speaking on this like so heavily and I need to change it before I uh, unintentionally uh, be associated with the wrong control scheme. Okay, apply, yes. Back, back, resume. Boost! Get me out of there! Thankfully, these guys are lower level, so I can kind of just ignore them. As opposed to, uh, you know, straight up die in Zarkov. So, 
More questions. Um, I've got a question from Pesky Husky, who's just asking for a little bit of clarification with regards to the uh, console release on Tuesday. Sure. Um, it's just wanting some clarification on the digital downloads and that what is happening on October the 3rd, because obviously there's a difference between the digital and then the retail release later in the year. Okay, so what's the what's the clarity that they're specifically seeking on that front? Um, it just said, could you tell me a bit about those digital downloads? I presume you're going to begin selling on October the 3rd. Um, so I think it's what's included in maybe with the digital download uh, and then what is going to be included in the retail release, which is coming October the 3rd. Okay, um, Lee, I think you're floating in the stream. If you are, um, could you give me a little bit more definitive answer on that one? Um, I would appreciate that. Because that's that's a, that's a very specific question. I do like that question. I'm also not sure um, if you are referring to, yeah, I just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of passing that off if possible, Lee, if you are there. Um, if Lee is not there and I'm just speaking to... Yeah, he is. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So um, I really do appreciate that one. That one's digging into some details that I'm not familiar with, but I do know that Lee is. So um, for those of you who are not familiar with Lee, he is our uh, PR communications uh, marketing sort of savant. And uh, yeah, that is his territory but I'm happy to know it too, so I can make sure you guys do too. So uh, while he's pulling that data, um, Gary, I do see that we do have more questions. I'm happy to answer some more. Oh yeah. Um, one of the things that we just got coming in on YouTube from Freestone, um, just asked, he says, I know that you're playing on the controller, uh, obviously for the consoles, but could Eric please share his keyboard bindings for the circle strafing that he uses? Oh yeah, I I can do that really quick. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be so annoying um, because you're all gonna be like, what? Seriously? I use the default controls. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm pushing Control to go down. I'm pushing A to go left. I'm pushing Space to go up, and I'm using D to go right. That is legitimately how I do this on controller. I very much like the default controls. I know that some of you think that I'm crazy. I am incredibly used to it, and so it works for me. Some people are like, but you can't like boost and go down. Yes, you can. That's very easy to do. It's just, it's a simple matter of like how you've grown accustomed to the control schemes that you're using. I'm not saying that what I'm using is the all time best, but I also am saying that we're pretty happy with our default controls. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just something that I've very much grown used to and I do really like, so. It worked in descent, says Spoot Knight. Got him! Got him on that one. Yeah, it's it's very similar controls to descent. You are incredibly correct. All right, and Lee did come back with an answer to the question. Uh, thanks again, Lee. Um, so the digital version available on August 15th is the game on its own. The August 3rd retail release is a physical disc packaged in a steelbook case along with a 64 page art book and a digital download code for the soundtrack. So I'm thinking that maybe uh, the initial question that was asked um, a moment ago pertaining to the digital download, um, that's not the game that's gonna be October 3rd. That is specifically the soundtrack. So thanks again, Lee, for that clarity. Um, the game itself, the digital download for the game itself, that is on August 15th. Like that is going to be how you gain access uh, on the release day for the consoles. So if there is a follow-up question there, uh, by all means, go ahead and shoot it our way. Uh, we're still happy to provide any additional clarity um, and all that fun stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and answer another question as I look at our ship dealer options and opportunities. Ooh, we got the Swift Wing. Oh, this was, this was designed by one of our backers. Very nice. Yeah. Ooh. All right. And fold it as well. <laughs> uh, what's the... What's the questions we got right um skunk if is just asking uh how long will it take to complete everything within the game um based on averages 
It's usually about uh, 90 hours to 100 hours if you're trying to 100% complete it for any, like a general, the general audience. Um, of course, that doesn't include speedrunners, um, and it also doesn't include, um, you know, it's, it's all types of players, honestly. Um, some people it's going to take much longer, some people it's going to take much less. Um, but generally speaking, the main story from start to finish, that's going to be approximately 30 to 40 hours. Um, and the 100% completion of doing all of the things in the current game uh, is approximately 90 to 100 uh, hours. So yeah. What's kind of ironic is that, I mean, obviously a dev team, play the game a lot, capture stuff a lot, whatever. Um, I haven't technically 100% completed the game yet, um, but my Steam account is a little over a thousand hours, so I'm a bit behind. <laughs> But, uh, goodness. If you put all of my iterations together, I've 100% completed the game like seven times over. But, the fact of the matter is I haven't done it once on a single play file, so... Uh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Do we have more questions? Um, Slorain's asked, uh, will the soundtrack and or art book be available for early access players? If you had... If you are a part of the backer status, then you'll get in, you have like the, those availabilities, they will be available respectively, like the October 3rd date for the digital art book uh, or soundtrack, excuse me. Um, you would have that accessible. Um, if you're talking about if you weren't part of those tiers, but you have an interest in um, purchasing them once they could potentially be available, yes, we will have those opportunities. It'll be a separate purchase option very likely on the respective storefronts of your choosing um but um uh, yeah i don't know when that would possibly happen all i know is that that is something that has been publicly stated um we do want to have kind of like a similar deluxe edition like we had for everspace one that had the art book and screenshots and uh, the sound was it also the soundtrack shoot i think it was all those things you could buy all of that together plus the game um, we would like to do something very similar, if not exactly identical, uh, with Everspace 2. Cool. Um, Eek the Angry Snail, by the way, has just wondered how do you manage all the hotkeys for items when you're playing the uh, keyboard and mouse? Hotkeys for items? Oh, so actually, let me just show that really quick, too. I like how we are trying to focus on controllers for the game, but you know what? That's fine. This is a great question. For hotkeys, um, I actually, uh, gosh, I had I was having a conversation with other gamers um, in, about a different game actually recently, and how it's so annoying. <laughs> it's so annoying when your controls for your left hand go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like how long do you think my finger is? How can? <laughs> Um, so I changed mine. Um, is it possible? Yeah, it's on the default controls that you can do the one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight for your consumables. But as you can see, I've actually modified mine so it actually looks like I'm using a controller on the right side. Mine is bound to uh, my mouse four button. So whenever I want to use a consumable, instead of pushing five, six, seven, or eight, I hold this down and then I just push WASD very accessible from my left hand as opposed to reaching over and going oh shoot where's the button where oh i i died so that's what i do that's that's my particular style so it's a hold for consumables and then on the left side i have my buttons for devices very accessible but yep but anyway controllers alleviate that situation entirely though uh, because instead of having any sort of you know reaching issues it's all from the buttons right so if you hold the X button, the left side button, it operates your left side controls, which happens to be the devices. And if you hold the right side button, it opens up the controls for your right side options. And all you have to do with in conjunction of that is push a direction in the um, directional keypad and away you go. Super duper easy peasy. That's even a bit more fluid than the PC side, in my opinion, but I still prefer mouse and keyboard. <laughs> another really good question okay so man i'm looking at this ship dealer i'm looking at that swift wing i might not purchase right now because i think we did recently play a striker 
I, I want new options. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait um, approximately eight minutes, I think it is, until a ship gets cycled out from a ship dealer. Um, and then once that's done, we're going to return to those options and, and see what we've got waiting for us. So we are going to go ahead and save our game. Uh, do -do 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 -do, nightmare new dismiss Franks. This is where we're going to pick up next time. Um, otherwise, we're going to keep answering questions, but I'm also transitioning over to our little spotlight segment for our community because our community is freaking awesome. And I want to highlight some of your amazing screenshots that you've captured just in the last week. So give me one second and I'll set that stuff up. Now, I am also changing up my formula just a, a tad differently uh, today, just a, just a tad differently. So normally I have these organized in a structure where it is uh, in a, a descending order from timestamps. So I would show screenshots that have been taken a long time ago first and then the most recent ones last. I'm going to group this differently. I'm going to group this one differently, excuse me, uh, just for the sake of two particular users. Um, what we're doing today is I'm gonna highlight them based off the users taking up the photo. And I think you're gonna see why uh, here in just a moment. So this first shot does come from DH397, highlighting their particular playership. I'm always a big fan of whenever you highlight your playership and the customization that you chose. The Seriously, the variety that comes out of the ship customization, I am, I'm constantly impressed with. Somebody will show a ship and I'm just like, oh, that, that was a clever design. It's, it's, it's so cool. So thank you, keep it up. I love the, the gold finish on this, but still like that black and the, the purple uh, 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 lights. It just, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's super neat. Um, after this one, I'm gonna transition over to several shots from Excel, which just have some incredible contrast. I wanna highlight all of them. And while we're highlighting each one of these, I'm gonna cycle through as we are answering more of your questions. So let's do it. Let's get some more questions going. Waiting patiently. Oh, there's no. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, that's fine. Mm. That is totally fine. Oh, I also see. Uh, I do see a question from Skunky Ape on YouTube. Uh, can you change your ship so we can see something different? Gunship Maisie. Yeah. So at the start of the next stream, <laughs> the start of the next stream, we will be changing our ship. Um, I do like to rotate the ships out about every two to three streams. That way, we're not just stuck watching the same darn thing over and over. Each one does offer a different play style and they can uh, promote some pretty healthy differences of usage. In fact, let's just kind of talk a little bit about that as we're looking at these shots from Excel using these very nice high contrast uh, shots. I mean, as you can see here from the Sentinel, we've been using the Sentinel, just a nice uh, combination of the greens going on here. Um, this one's the bomber and you just see all the smoke trails from the missiles being fired off, just like the this sheer chaos that this one is uh, bringing forth. It is bringing the rain in the form of smoke and pain and destruction in all things. Very cool. Uh, very, very good shot as well. We also have this one, another, uh, this one's from the Striker, uh, giving us that big old blue finish. Nice use again of that contrast going on. Uh, just highlighting all of those intricate details of the ship always really cool. It's a nice high definition shot too, so you can really get in here and see you know, what's going on. Always makes me happy when you guys highlight the, the work that we've put into these models, because th these were not something that we just kind of scuffed over. This, this was important to us. We wanted them to stand out. And the screenshots that you take really reflect that. You're very good compositionally uh, and bringing forth what we've provided and always makes us happy. This last one comes from an uh, Interceptor. Um, all of these, again, these are all Excel's shots. Um, just really, really loving on how he's bringing them together. The light sources are just so strong, so clean, super cool. Mm. Well, I also just, I just saw a comment too. I just want to read this one out loud. If we do have questions, um, we'll get to them in just one moment. Um, Pappy said over on YouTube, he said, I've just recently discovered using toggle on boost and I really like it better. It took a little while to get used to and I still make mistakes from time to time, but overall it's better. Yeah, and I think that's gonna work definitely for a lot of people on controller, especially. I wanna put a lot of emphasis on that. 
Um, granted, it's also available for you know mouse and keyboard. Um, very simple change uh, in the menu options. But yeah, for some people, it really works well. <clears throat> and I think for controller support, um, because boosting is bound to the um, left stick, the left three button, I think it's called, when you push it as a button, um, that's your way to boost. So you have to hold that down. And then if you're like doing any sort of navigating, maneuvering stuffs and things, uh, sometimes that can be a little bit uh, of wear and tear on your thumbs. And changing that to a toggle can be just an absolute godsend. So I don't do it because I don't like it, but I'm just one person. <laughs> All right, do we have questions as we're looking at ExoMath's shot being barraged by um, a solar storm? Uh, Am Shedar over on YouTube would like to know, uh, the first game was a roguelite and the second game is a semi-open world one. Uh, have there been any other genres that uh, you've played around with or that you'd like to expand into? I think this is a really cool question. Um, and I think the very simple answer to that is we would be delighted to explore what you know the Everspace franchise could look like from a number of genres and mediums for that matter. Um, that just comes down to what we're able to produce and uh, the time that we can do that. Um, and because we are, you know, I, I get that we're a pretty strong little indie studio, but we're still a little studio. And we have to devote our cause accordingly to make sure that things are well within our uh, skill set, our experience and within you know, the, the plausible outcomes. And so if we are to explore and experiment a bit too much on that front, we're not gonna get anything done. And then we're gonna have a, a number of people who are uh, unable to keep their lights on and eat food, that would be a problem. So uh, the short of it, when it comes down to is, um, Everspace One was actually a roguelite out of necessity in keeping asset usage a little bit more compact making development costs come down. And Everspace 2 is truly the game that we wanted to make from the outset. A pseudo open world environment where you can go and explore and do things, um, you know, much more similar to uh, some of our previous works, some of our team's previous works before we were Rockfish. And that's, that's ultimately what we, you know, probably would like to do moving forward after Everspace 2 is my guess. But uh, that's something we can talk about in the future when we start getting to that point. If we get to that point, I don't, I don't know what the future looks like. I don't think anybody here is a fortune teller. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's just kind of the, the short of it. So it's an interesting and a, and a good question. I, I like that though. It's a curious question. I like you guys' curiosity. This shot comes from uh, just with the, uh, Flory. Flory, we got this shot. Um, I, I love it whenever this, uh, the I think it's called the Pigeon Stare. This is a legendary beam laser. Whenever you can capture a shot when one side's triggered, but the other one hasn't yet. So the idea here is that one of these beams is not charged up, but the other one is. And the way that happens is if there's a misalignment as you're shooting, because it charges up as you're hitting a target. So here he was charging up by hitting a target with one side and then brought the other one in. So then the first one got fully charged while the other one isn't there yet, making them look like two different weapons almost. That's just a cool sort of uh, uh, visual effect. And uh, I think it was nice for you to capture that, just showing that a little bit. Also, congratulations on completing that riff. What what riff level was that? Was that, uh, was that, was that 50? Was that? <laughs> Of course it was a thousand. I mean, it's probably what he's going to say. Is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Do we have a, do we have another question? Oh, it's 500. Um, That's good. That's good. 500 is uh, a pretty good challenge. Nice. Um, Exomaths over on Twitch. A uh, bit of a technical question. Uh, is it possible to take a high res screenshot like in 4K if we play at 1080p? Or is the photo mode resolution limited to the game resolution? I believe that Unreal Engine's photos that it captures, oh shoot, I have to do some quick research on that. I think that you can actually get some really high definition shots from uh, just from the Unreal Engine uh, screenshotter, which is it F10 or F11? Oh my gosh, why am I forgetting that command? Ooh, but it's much more high res than like the Steam screenshots. Steam screenshots, I think are 720p by default. Um, also this shot that we're looking at is by LJ Dude. Um, and his comment on this was, if it's ner it's it's nerf or nothing. <laughs> I just thought that was a clever timeline. So <laughs> nice ship colors, I do do that. Um, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, I believe Shadowy says it's twice your resolutions, if I recall correctly. So, okay. Um, 
So I suppose if you wanted to get a 4K resolution screenshot, you're gonna have to do some digging to get some third-party software, is my guess. Um, but it is not integrated through Steam, I know for certain, and it's not something that we have available um, in the internal controls of the game itself. So. Yeah, it's a good question though. That's a good question. I love it when you guys have the, like the higher resolution shots. I mean, I, I highlight it all the time, so you know that's true. <laughs> Next shot comes from Phantom Lord. A very dark shot, very ominous, and that's why I love it. And it also pairs so well with the username Phantom Lord. It just, that's, it's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I love the state of this shot just floating around in the DMZ where everything is just barren. It's a wasteland. Who knows what's around this corner? And it just, it speaks to me so much. I love the storytelling that's provided in this shot alone. Um, and you guys know I always talk about that. I love it when your screenshot tells a story. Could it use more contrast? Probably, but still. I just, I love the way that it was composed. I love the invite it has and the curiosity and wonder. Um, so great work on that front, Phantom Lord. Definitely dig the shot. Very, very cool. Going over to the next shot, we've got Phantom Lord again. Uh, and this one, I'm, I'm blocking what kind of brings this shot together. We have this brilliant use of the field of view going on here, where this ship is in the shot, yet it's not the focal point. And by doing this, it gives just that greater sense of scale. Like this is a massive, massive explosion in comparison to this little stinger that's just hanging out in the corner. It's also just a, a great shot of the explosion itself, getting those little chunks and the, um, uh, oh my gosh, I forget the terminology of what it's called, but the circle thingy that like has the colors in it. Ah, it's it just, I love it. I love it. It's very cool. <laughs> terminology escapes me like all the time. Okay, so just, it's my, my brain. <laughs> The important part is, is that it's awesome and he's done a good job of capturing it. And I want to highlight that. So very well done, uh, Phantom Lord. Love both of your shots. Brought them home. Cool, cool. Next couple shots are coming from Sonozaki. Gary, dude, we have any questions come in yet? I haven't really been poking around too much. Not really. Uh, Pappy would like to know a bit of a, bit of a fun question, this oh, sure. one. Is there an obsession with fish? Uh, with regards to the company name, uh, Fish Labs, obviously, Rockfish, etc. Not really. The The company name actually comes from the stalwart nature of Michael and his goals. So from where he was before uh, to where he is now, the only way that he could endure is basically being uh, unbreakable. And the rockfish is known as a creature that is very much like that. Uh, the rockfish is strong, it's bolsterous, it's, um, you know, it's, it's hard to crack, if you will. Um, and so echoing the sentiments of the actual creature itself, the rockfish, um, just was a perfect fitting for uh, where rockfish was actually established from the, the history of um, where a lot of team members actually came from. We won't be breaking. We won't be breaking. We won't be broken. Um, we have very specific goals in mind that we are not going to. Uh, we're not. We're not going to sell. Like our integrity is too much for us to just be bought and transform our creative goals in mind. Like this is something that actually happened through the process of Ever Space One. I know you guys weren't behind the scenes, but there were plenty of times where you know Michael and I would have conversations and you'd hear somebody say like, well, if they did this, blah, 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 and we could give you that money and blah, blah, blah. And we and we turned down any of those opportunities that would make us lose our creative rights. Like we didn't want that to happen. We know what we're set out to be and we're rock solid in regards to that movement forward. So uh, we're continuing that formula, of course, and we, st we still think that the name of the company quite fits, especially in how we approach um, all things, really. Um, and uh, we're also incredibly uh, humbled by our community that also is just so dedicated to the cause, um, who's also unyielding um, to help support us and to get us where we're at. The community support through the early access process has just been huge. So 
that's really where the name gets uh, the, the company gets its name from um, not necessarily an obsession of fish uh, just that it's a, a very stalwart creature so yeah this shot also comes from uh, Sonozaki just love the the way that he's uh, composed the shot love those I love like the little peepholes where it's almost like instead of playing the game you're watching some other experience uh, going on and just seeing the the sentinel out there cruising through this uh, you know whatever assortment of space this is uh, is just pretty cool I think this is actually see that but uh, really love how eloquent it is I look over and I see the way you've done explosions in Everspace 2 are just 10 out of 10 though. Thank you so much. Yeah, we actually, we did a lot of work on explosions, believe it or not. We felt like we did a pretty good job with Everspace 1. We're just like, yeah, but can we turn it up to 11? <laughs> I think the team has, has accomplished that. Um, but yeah, we're, we're pretty happy with how those come across. Feels good. So uh, this next shot comes from the Chemical Bro who just needed to take a little bit of a dip. Summer is hot! I don't know where you all are living. That would be a very long conversation to go through every single one of you out there. Uh, but what I can say is that where I live, geez, I want to be in the pool 24-7. It's ridiculous. So uh, this makes me really happy. Uh, the Chemical Bro also understanding a lot of the core concepts of contrast. Always loving what he brings to the table here. It's a really pleasant screenshot. Love it. So... Uh, the next, the next shot. <coughs> Hang on a second. The next shot. Let's gotta just put these on because it's gonna get really bright. All right. So uh, <laughs> this one, uh, this one comes from the tundra, and uh, whoo, boy, uh, he decided to have a rave party at his home base, um, and I think that he's captured this pretty well. I think that Elec maybe went a little bit excessive on you know the the party additions but you know you can't blame the poor lad because he just he's all about that joy and praise uh so definitely a clever shot wasn't expecting anything like this and you know i love i love getting you know surprised by what you're all bringing to the table i also have to mention i'm not entirely sure how many shots went in here it had to have been a large number and the fact that he's still pulling hang on a second he's still He's still pulling 42 frames per second amongst this absolute chaos. I feel like that's the most impressive part of the shot. <laughs> that's, uh, whew. Very nice, very nice. So last but not least, we are panning over to Winged Nightmare's photo here. Um, and uh, yeah, just the symmetry here, I just think is on point. You can't, you can't beat that. You love everything about it. The color coordination. I mean, gosh, we could throw so many like, cute little photo terms out here uh but at the end of the day it's just it's very pleasing to the eye comes together very well hold up 99 million credits oh dude man some of our veteran players um 99 million is nothing <laughs> like <laughs> uh so yeah it just it kind of just depends on how much you're playing the game and, and uh the trading that you're doing as well that can net some serious cash fast So, very, very good. Um, I'm looking for any more questions that may or may not have snuck in. I'm not seeing any. You see any, Gary? Uh, the only one that's just coming from Pesky um, over on YouTube is asking um, if your monitor or TV or whatever is 4K, then does the game support 4K resolution too, or is there a res limit for the game? Um, uh, that, is, that is a great question. I need to look up the information um, real quick, because I do know that we've we've had that discussion in the past and we want to make sure that we're operating as best as possible. I think for the Xbox series, which one's the which one's the higher res, res, well, the more powerful one? Is it the X or the S? I can never remember. X. It's the X, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure everybody here knows it's just my brain. Again, it works in weird ways. The Xbox Series X um, has 60 frames at 4K. Um, I need to find the PlayStation 5. I'm pretty sure that it's also 60 frames 4K. Yeah. Um, oh, it, you know that? Um, I th think it's 4K. I know it's definitely 60 frames per second. 
Okay. Well, yeah, and it, we didn't want it to be less than 60 frames. That was that was a deciding factor that we had internally. Like we wanted it to reach 60 frames um, for uh, minimal performance. Um, let me. Oh, Lee, Lee's just died in. Um... Oh, oh. Oh, it was. It was there. It's gone. Hang on. <laughs> oh, did it, did it get blocked? Oh, there he goes. Uh, yeah, he's put it here. Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 are both 60 frames per second at 4K. Thank you. All right. Really do appreciate that confirmation. I knew that we had that talked internally, just couldn't remember where the information was. Uh, but it's always nice to have that double check to confirm. So thanks again, Lee. What a rock star today. Super duper. Um, so great question, um, and uh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, looking forward to the console release though next week. It should be an absolute blast. I hope that you guys grew uh, in some semblance uh, of the possibilities of what the controller has to offer. Um, I've spoken on a number of occasions through the course of the stream, even while I was playing on the controller, that I am a mouse and keyboard player but there's some things that you can do from a controller that just can't be beat. And inherently as a console player, you should have a lot to look forward to because those skills and abilities and tools are gonna be right in your hands come August 15th. So uh, really looking forward to being able to share this game with all of you. Um, and also just as another reminder, we would love to continue growing our community space. Um, Gary and I are gonna have some chats about some new ways that we can kind of bridge some of those gaps that are kind of out there. We know that the PlayStation user base and the um, Xbox user base don't really have a, a sort of a landing pad. Um, and we would love to bring you into our spaces. So we want to see what we can do on our side. Um, but for now, if you ever need to poke us, always come to our Discord. Always hit us up on Reddit. Always come to the Steam forums. I know, it's like, I'm playing on console, why am I coming to Steam? Steam forums do provide a lot of information over on that side. It's annoying, I get it. Um, but yeah, you can get a lot of information on that side as well. Um, but I think for the most part, what we do want to see, uh, where we want to see a lot of communications on, for console specifically, is in our Discord. So don't be shy. Making an account is super duper free and it's easy to get to. You just go to discord uh, discord.gg slash rockfish games. You'll easily jump in um, and we want to tidy up that space just a tad more for you console players. Not only to have a space, a landing pad for you, but also to help you if should anything go wrong, just to make things easier instead of having to bounce over to a Steam forum that has nothing to do with a console um, and just make things easier. So. We'll get there very soon. Otherwise, guys, you have just been awesome. I have just been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador, joined by... Me, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Perfection. Um, thanks again for all team members who are sneaking in the chat, answering questions. Um, and guys, don't stop being awesome. We'll catch you next week where we'll probably do some more controller stuff and we'll highlight maybe something new very intentionally uh, per Michael's request. So hmm, maybe there'll be something else to see there. That could be fun. Toodles. We're so close to consoles, dude. I'm I'm so hyped. I really am. Like, I, I, yes, I, I play primarily PC in a lot of cases, but still, like, this is such an exciting moment for us. Our team's been pouring out so much hard work and bringing these things together for you all, and we can't wait for more people to have this experience. Ah, oh, it's so good. So excited. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Also, for all of those who are showing up to these streams, you know, um, we want to do more with these streams. We want to, you know, have more sort of engagement opportunities with you. And if you actually think of 
ways that you would like us to, you know, direct the stream, if something that you think would be really cool, you should let us know. Like, just let us know on like the Discord and stuff. Like, we, we obviously got some ideas churning and we want to do more with them. Uh, but yeah, don't be a stranger. And also make sure that you're inviting your friends. We would love to, to bring more into the space. Uh, and the more that we have, the more that we're going to do. Also keep that in mind. So without further ado, I know why you're all staying over here. I know you. Let's have some fun. <clears throat> Also noticed that I was popping a lot last week. I'll try to be more gentle. Oh, let's see. Have a wonderful, beautiful weekend. Enjoy Everspace on August 15th from your console. And come swing by next week's stream for maybe possibly another new goodie. It's a win-win. Next week's gonna be pretty freaking awesome. It's gonna be pretty freaking awesome. Mm.